All right, who's ready for a baby? Me, just, just kidding. <laughs> My time I think might be passing. I still hold out hope that we might have one or two more somehow. My husband, not so much. We need to talk about something a little bit more seriously. Male infertility is on the rise, guys. This is something we've got to pay attention to. We're not putting enough focus on it. So many couples are trying to conceive, start their family, begin that journey of their lives, and they hit a roadblock and they hit a wall. But 30 to 50%, that's a pretty big range, 30 to 50% of couples experience infertility because of the guy. We always think it's us, but male infertility is on the rise. And here's another statistic that's going to surprise you. Male infertility is on the rise, but 50% of the time, we don't know why. So we've got to step back and try to understand what we need to do to help our men have the best sperm they can possibly have. So let me break it down a little bit. Here's what I think is going on. So first of all, there's so many factors involved in fertility for men and for women. Your diet matters, gut health matters, your weight matters, your environmental load or toxic load really matters too. And here's what I'm seeing more and more. We've got more men who are overweight with BMIs over 25 or so. This is indeed gonna impact fertility. Men today, just like women, just like children, have a higher toxic load than ever before. So the chemicals in our skincare products, our food, our water, our air, many of these are endocrine disruptors. And we've talked about this before. This is stuff like parabens and phthalates, vox or volatile organic compounds. They're even in your home with indoor air pollution. All of these come together to really mess up the hormone access. So many men are walking around low in testosterone, low in DHEA, low in these critical hormones that impact sperm motility and production. So we've got to help men get a healthy weight and at the same time balance their hormones. Here's another fun fact. Candida or yeast overgrowth is impacting male infertility. What's candida? Well, it's an overgrowth of yeast in your gut. But more importantly, what does candida do? Candida is driving up those insulin levels, keeping a higher blood sugar, which again is gonna be more weight gain, more belly fat, and that in turn will block male fertility. Now, how do you reduce candida? Well, there's a diet for it, but guess what the biggest trigger for candida is? It's actually alcohol. So excessive alcohol consumption is also going to impact male infertility. We've talked toxins, we've talked about weight, we've talked about sort of looking at hormone balance, we've talked about candida. The last factor impacting male infertility, in my opinion, is stress. Men today, just like women, are stressed in a different way, but many of them are not sleeping through the night or they're burning the candle at both ends. But that stress is also going to age them and impact their sperm quality and their sperm count. So what do we do? Let's get all men. I hope you guys are watching. I know I attract a lot of super women, but maybe there's some super men watching too. But let's get everybody on the same page here. It doesn't matter. We're one big happy family and you're trying to create a family. So first rule, have an anti-inflammatory diet in place. That means bringing down the gluten, bringing down the dairy, really watching the sugar, and reducing that alcohol consumption down to under, wait for it, don't get mad at me, please, 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 under four to six drinks per week. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, start cleaning up your products. Start taking a look at your shaving cream, at your soaps, your shampoos, your food quality. Start really paying attention to that stuff and making sure you're not using products that are gonna increase your toxic load. I would also choose organic where you can when it comes to produce and high quality grass-fed organic meat and dairy. Next, after you sort of tackle those two pieces of the puzzle, really safeguard your gut health. In fact, maybe taking a probiotic to lower the amount of sort of yeast in the gut and balance out the good guys and the bad guys that are living in here. That's going to, again, improve your digestive health, your metabolism, and so much more, but most importantly, your fertility. And last but not least is really having some sort of detox mechanism in place where you're flooding your body with all the antioxidants and the nutrients it needs 
to stay vital, to stay super powered. So this could look like so many different things. It can look like liver cleanup. So remember when we have dirty livers or toxic livers, the sperm can't do what it needs to do. Fertility cannot happen. So things like dandelion tea, sipping on that throughout the day, adding milk thistle, which is a great herbal supplement for the liver itself. It comes as a tea or a tincture or even just a, a traditional pill. Getting a lot of those greens in so you get more glutathione. Glutathione is an antioxidant that kind of feeds all the cells and helps everybody to come alive. Those are things you can do on a daily basis to really help both the liver and the gut. And you can do organized detoxes. So doing like a 10 day liver detox or a 28 day detox of some kind just to completely reset the body is not a bad idea if you're thinking about starting a family. Lastly, taking things in like CoQ10, which is an antioxidant glutathione in a supplement form or IV form. Those are things that we've seen can also improve male infertility. So again, infertility is not just about the gals. The guys are involved and the numbers are going up. We can do something about it. When we merge medicine, we get answers. And this is your action plan for changing the dialogue around male infertility and putting it in place so that you can start your family as well. Don't forget, I share new YouTube videos every Thursday. And if you like this one, don't forget to like and subscribe.